All right, we're back in the shop again, getting a 1361 ready for the running season. And the throttle's all completed now. And hopefully that's going to work out good. I think it will. And one of the other issues we've had ever since, like, almost day one is with the gauge glass. Now, I made this fancy gauge glass with the, with the column, and that works nice. That's nice and everything. I added a second one because that was a little hard for me to see. Dan could see it a little bit easier. Uh, but I had a problem seeing it, so last year I added another gauge glass, which is always good to have two anyway. Problem comes in that I have several of these reflex glass that are on the market today. And they just look great and they work okay for a couple of firings and then after that for some reason they just don't work and I've heard some stories of guys saying the one minute they have water the next minute they didn't and I'm gonna stick my neck out here and say that's because the passage the, the, the column is right about here but the the, the uh, pipe is off center a little bit and it's drilled on an angle there's like a, like a curvature part of the drill in there. And I think what happens is condensation, it's equal pressure in here, by the way, on both sides. So any water that condensates in there comes down and it drips and it lays in there. And then it, from vibration, it drops to the bottom, makes it look like there's water. And then all of a sudden it's there anymore. And we've had a lot of problems with them. We run our boiler, believe it or not, we ran it dry one time doing that. And I kept, you know, I, I gave the benefit of that. To, to the manufacturer. Um, I tried putting my own gauge glass in. I bought extra ones and they broke on me putting them in. They're not completely a flat glass. They're not flat. They have a little bit of a curve to them. And when you go try to tighten them, they snap. And the other thing is, I don't think that the prism in the back is sharp enough. It's more or less like a rounded. And then it gets a lot of crud in there. This one has a little bit of that, some of that LSB in there. And I think that prevents it from, from uh, working properly. And uh, the manufacturer paints them red in the back. But that only lasts for uh, a couple of firings. And then it goes away. I even tried using a high, very high temperature paint that's used on these brake calipers. I happen to have one when I redid the Mustang. And I put that on there. Works okay for a little bit and then it doesn't work after that. So now, what I've done is I've modified one to accept the round, tubular, ordinary red line glass. And I, by the way, um, I scored it and snapped it. Worked beautiful. Couldn't believe it. The only thing is, right, this, these lines are painted on the back and it seems to chip right at where the paint is. So from now on, I'm going to try to take a, um, maybe a, I'll, next time I cut, chop, break one, I'm going to take a uh, razor and go around it right there at that point to kind of make a, a, a division there and see what happens. But entire, entire, it, it just snapped off completely flat, and I couldn't believe it. it worked beautiful. So uh, this one is... I started to use these little square things here. Come up here closer so you can see them. The little square things, you know, with the four pole posts. And I was going to bore these out and put that one in there. I might make that up just to have one. You know, it's not a big deal. It just took me 20 minutes to make that. So, make that up. And by the way, this is half inch OD. Can't get it too many places. McMaster car again. Thank God for that. And uh, I'm lucky enough to live five minutes from the supply house, so I order it online at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and on my way home. Uh, I live that direction, I just go by there. Now this one was given to me by my dear friend uh, Larry Thiel, who owns a, he owns a Lincoln Supply here in town, which is an industrial um, supplier, plumbing supply. It's not like your home plumbing supply. But this is 5 8 OD. It's just a little bit too big. What I've done to modify, but anyway, the original glass is, uh, I put it in the mill vertically and clamped it. 
Well, first thing I did is I put it flat like this. And I took a 5 8 ball mill and just kept running that back and forth in there down to a certain depth to get it so that it was, most of the meat was out of it. And then I stood it up this way and I plunged the two flute end mill, 5 8 end mill down to meet that both sides. So now I had a completely 5 8 hole all the way through. And then I made up a couple of um, bushings. I made one up for the bottom which has a 5 16 um, 27 thread which is 1 16th pipe. Now you can make it 1 8 if you want it. If you wanted to for some bigger engines or if you want that to be like the bottom you could do, do it that way. And on the top I just made up a couple of more of these little things and put them silver soldered the, the bottom one and the top one in and then I re-bored this out to accept the 5 8 one of these things. I was o-ring on the top and the bottom and uh, four bolts. It might look a little goofy but uh, it's going to work as long as I can get it to seal and the thing, the main thing on this one is, okay, you seal it to some degree and you really could, could test them, but everything's going to expand, especially the glass and what you need to do is wait as the thing comes up to temperature, slowly, slowly, so if it starts to leak, let it leak. In fact, it's better if it does leak and then very carefully when you know the engine's completely up to temperature and you're 120 pounds of steam, then very carefully tighten them down equally all the way around until the leaking stops and leave it that way. Okay, don't, don't go any further than that. But um, I'm going to zoom in on that now so you can see that. Let's see if I can do it here. And you can see that it's a red line glass and it looked perfect to me. I can show you pictures and at the end I'm going to put pictures up at the end of the video, I'm going to put pictures up, and uh, this is the modification with the round glass, and then I'm going to show you pictures with the reflex glass when they were new. It gives you the same effect. To me, it looks great. But anyway, that's um, a close up, and that to me looks every bit as good as the reflex glass was when it was new. But this one, I think, is going to stay clear like this. I, we're going to see what happens. I think it's going to be at work a lot better. And now, the one thing about this is, I don't know if I need it on the 1361. Let me resume that back. I don't know. I don't know if I need it on the 1361, but I have one light in the cab and one light on the uh, one light lights up the whole cab. I mean, you don't have to have daylight in there, guys. All you have to see really is a dim light. You don't want some bright light in there. Well, that's another story. And I got one on the gauge. Uh, the, the pressure gauge and one on the um, it, it lights up the whole cab one bulb and it, it, this gauge that's going to be right directly in front of that bulb so I think that we'll be able to see it at night we really don't run that much at night we run for a few hours you got to remember in the springtime it doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock at night who the heck wants to be out there 11 12 o'clock at night running a train that's pretty long but in this fall when it's a little cooler out um, and, and, and the sun goes in earlier, we run at 9 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock at night. It's dark, so uh, it's getting dusk uh, at our club. So anyway, uh, i got to change out the piping from this one to that one. And then I'm going to redo these. i got five of these things. i got five of them. i got one here, this one. i got one on the engine still, and i got two at home. So... I give up on them, guys. I mean, I tried, really. I thought that was the greatest thing since 7-Up. Years ago, Power Models had one, and uh, a fellow by the name of Stoney Burke, who knows what happened to him, lived in uh, some place down in Georgia. I just found his, his, his um, address the other day. Probably doesn't live there any longer. I don't know what happened to him. And uh, he was going to make one, and he was talking about it and everything, but the Power Models had them for a while. Don't know what happened to any of those. And um, uh, Russ Page from the uh, Washakam Live Steamers has one on the Sarah, and that thing's perfect. I really think it has a lot to do with the glass. Uh, I don't think the glass is correct. But anyway, uh, I think I've corrected the problem now. I think that looks just super. By the way, I turned the cover around the other way. I don't know why. I just did that. I thought it looked a little bit different. And... Um, uh, to me it looks okay. You can put it either way. The cover doesn't do anything now. It's just bolted on there for looks. 
and I might make one a little bit differently, maybe a square one. But they had clamps, little clamps all the way down to hold them. I might do one of those. Maybe make one. Um, so, well, by the way, you could slot out the back of this all the way down, actually, and put a light in there. Now, what I was thinking of using, if you've ever seen an H show, they have these, and I think you use them in dollhouses too. They look like a fuse. They're fluorescent and they're milk white, which is, I think, what you would want. And you can buy them so that they have a, uh, there's a uh, something that they sell to put them in. So I was thinking of maybe put uh, you could just snap it into a into like bolts on that bolt thing that bolts on the back with a cover to cover it up and just shine a light in. I have to see. I'm not worried about it right now. My main concern is to get so we have a good reliable water level indicator. Well, ah. <sighs> Boy, that took me a day and a half to make that. All day yesterday, about six, seven hours, and then today, about two hours, two, three hours, about eight hours. So what's that worth? Eight hours uh, at $40, $50, $50 an hour, if you figure what my time really is worth. So let's see, uh, 400 bucks? Would somebody pay me $400 for that? I doubt it. I doubt it. But that's what I got into it. That's what I got into it. going to give you 100, 100 bucks for it. You figure what I make, $5 an hour? No big deal. I ain't going to sell them for that. So anyway, that's holding the pressure pretty nice. Uh, I might, I think tonight I'm going to order some um, silicon rubber O-rings from uh, good old McMaster car. Th these are the O-rings that I used on the, uh, on the throttle. I got 25 of them for 7 bucks. Whoopee whoopee, right? Beautiful little O-rings, nice and solid. Now the only thing I can say about the, these O-rings are that they're hardened where these are a little softer which you really need for this application so I gotta think about that. But I think I'm gonna get one of those um, cutters that score it a little bit better instead of using a file. But it snapped right off. No problem. It worked out great. I was very Okay very well, I finally got finished installing and, it. Um, and, uh, here it is. All set up. And this is my extra one. This is the original one here that we got uh, 16,000 hits on the chat ski for. Probably up to 18,000 by now. But anyway, um, this is the one with the original reflex glass and this one has the new tubular glass. And it looks like it's going to work fine. Um, we'll have to wait and see when we fire it up. But uh, that part is done now and if that's successful then I'm going to change this one over the same way and change them all over. I was going to say, unless they fix the glass, manufacturer fixes the glass, they're not going to work. Simple as that. But, um, by the way, this is my uh, fire doors. Yeah, that's the practicality about it, you know. Easy backhead, simple. Some people make uh, look like a plumber's nightmare. But uh, I like simplicity. Three valves, injectors are here. This is the whistle here, right here. Bottles here. Boom, right along. So I'm going to be installing that next. I got to get the uh, air pump fixed up. Got to make a set of grates, which we'll talk about. Show you what I use for grates, believe it or not. And uh, we're getting ready. So, see you again next video. Thanks for watching.